गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु हो गुरुर् देहो महेश्वरा गुरुरे वपरम ब्रह्मा तस्माय श्री गुरवे नमः चिन्मयं व्यापियत सर्वं प्रायलोक्यं सचराचरं तत्पदं दर्शितं येना तस्माय श्री गुरवे नमः त्वमेव माता च पिता त्वमेव त्वमेव बंधुश्च सखा त्वमेव त्वमेव वेद्याद्राविनं त्वमेव त्वमेव सर्वं मम देव देव त्वमेव सर्वं मम देव देव ओम सहना बवतु सहना उगुनक्तु सह वीर्यम खरवावाहे तेजस्विना वधी तमस्तु मादित विशावाहे ओम शांति 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 So, what verse are we on? Does someone remember? Two ninety-eight. Two ninety-eight. Ganesh, are you here this evening? Yes, I'm here, Jim. Would you be so kind as to help us out? Sure. And Deepa, have you got a text to, to put up? I got the text. Yes. So. Yes, I do. All right. Two ninety-eight. Santhyan ye pratibandaha pumsaha sansara heta vodrishtaha tesha mekam mulam prathama vikaro bhavat yahankaraha. It is observed that there are obstacles also which hurl man into a world of births and deaths. Their one root for the reasons given above is the ego, the first modification of ignorance. Yes. So we uh, started with this section that started on 267, the annihilation of the Vasanas. He's given us exercises how to stay in steady identification with the self. And now he's cutting to the very root of it. What is the subtlest discrimination and the most important one? The discrimination between the self and the ego. Now, in Sanskrit, the word for ego is ahankara or ahankriti, various forms of that. Aham is simply the first person pronoun, I. Kara means to make or to do something, to cause. So it's the kind of thinking that causes me to feel like I'm a person. It's also known as Jiva Bhavana. Bhavana means a feeling, the feeling or the thought that I'm a person. So Ramana Maharshi's great, great instruction, which is for the subtlest of minds, is to stay with the question, who am I? And if you go looking for this phony self, this jiva bhavana, 
this ahankara, you find that it falls. It's not a thing. It's a kind of thinking in the intellect. And what's really there is witnessing consciousness. If I feel like a person, I'm deluded. Ego will always say, resolve the struggle of ego. Always takes one of two forms. I either need to fix the world and its people, or I need to fix me. And then there's always furrowing towards a goal, a struggle. I'll be happy when. And Shankara here is saying, drop it. Give up your concern for this world and its people, places, and things. Drop any personal sense of self. And stay identified with that chidakash, that space of consciousness alone. Now, listen very carefully. In our earlier study, it was important to be a mumukshu. Mumukshu is one who has the burning desire for liberation. And frequently in the mind, the mind will say, I want to be a realized person. Am I, Jim, realized yet? So I want to get the gym person to go from being a fool to being enlightened. What actually happens is we wear down that ego sense. We dispense with it. We throw it out. Don't try to be a realized person. Instead, remember that you are Brahman. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but drop it. Don't be a person. Step back away from any personal sense of self and the struggle to secure it that the mind always puts up. Any thoughts about this? Uh, yes, you've told me this many times that I need to drop my ego, and I'm, uh, I guess I'm just slow. Um, but one of the things I've who really is been it who's is... slow? Stop it, Justin. Who yes. thinks he's slow? Exactly. Um, drop it. I understand what you're saying. Drop it now. Well, I you was just noticing this. how obsessed I am with myself. Uh, drop with my it. Drop that yeah. story right now. Let mm. it go. Yeah. That's what we have to do over and over again. Well, that's why I kept on saying, who cares today? Ah. Like I told you, I said. <laughs> yeah. You didn't even let me finish. You just cut me off. Um, I was going to say what I noticed in my uh, thinking today, and then I kept on saying, who cares about it? And it was all, all about validating this, my ego. All this is story about yourself, your little self. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. And the ego, I, I, there's a terrible demon that we encounter at this point. The demon's name is Yabbat. Because the ego then goes, yeah, but what I do? Yeah, but what about? Yeah, but we did it. And what it doesn't want us to do is just drop that nonsense. Drop it.
Now, what I've done with Justin is true for everybody in class. I'm not singling him out uniquely. It's a universal situation. He was just the guinea pig tonight. All right, next verse. Yavatsyat Swasya Sambando Hankarina Duratmana Tavant Lesha Matrapi Mukti Varta Vilakshana. As long as there is any relationship with this vile ego, so long there should not be even the slightest talk about liberation, which is unparalleled. Yes. Yes. So we want to be what's called sthita pragya, steady wisdom. Ruthlessly. Major surgery on the psyche. Cut it off, discard it. Now, what happens? What happens is we may be completely identified with the self and then the veil of ignorance comes down and we don't see it and the ego identification arises and it seems so real and logical. We even get identified with asking questions about letting go of ego and stuff like that. any personal sense of self. As soon as you notice it, drop it. Drop it. It's completely unsatisfying. But it's what needs to be done. Next verse. All right, Jim, this is David. Before we go to the next verse, could you explain what you mean by it's, uh, it's deeply unsatisfying, but it needs to be done? Well, you don't get an answer to your questions. You don't get an answer to ways to secure yourself. So what should I do about this problem at the office? I mean, I need an answer. And the guru says, drop it. It's stupid. Who are you? Let it go. Yeah, but this is really important. Drop it. Thank you, that's clear. Remember, I think it was last week or the week before, Shankara says, your pradabda will take care of the body. No worry. Don't let ego identify. Oh, but I've got to be identified because I've got to take care of this problem. No. Cast them all off. All the stories about childhood, all the stories about politics, all the stories where we create that phony sense of self. I am fill in the blank, drop them all. Ruthlessly. Next verse. 
अहंकार गृहान मुक्त स्वरूप उपपद्यते चंद्र बदिमल पूर्ण सदानंद स्वयं प्रभ Freed from the shackles of the ego, like the moon, like the moon, freed from the eclipse, man gains his true nature and becomes untainted, infinite, ever blissful, and self-effulgent. Yes. So the reference here is to the mythology about the demon Rahu. So these are, I think they call them the lunar nodes, Rahu and Ketu. We don't have them in Western astrology. But Rahu is a demon that has an enormous mouth and head, but no body. So he travels invisibly through the sky and every once in a while he sees the moon. There's the moon, he's going chomp. Chomp swallows the moon, but the good news because he has no body, it just comes out the other side. In truth, the moon is never really obscured, it's just a shadow that passes in our view. Don't let this phony sense of self. Another word we have for it is chit chaya. Chaya means shadow or reflection. Don't let the shadow self, this ahankara, these ideas of me, obscure your real nature. Nothing can touch you. You need not be improved. You cannot be diminished. There's nothing for you to accomplish. Let go. Let go. Let go. Next one. योगा पुरे सोहमिति प्रतीतो बुद्धिया प्रकृत I think you're muted. Oh. Uh can you hear me now, Jim? Yes. Okay. Uh, my internet's kind of uh, unstable, so it might do weird things. Um, yeah. Are you there? Deepa, can you read this first? We've lost Ganesh. Sure, Jim, I can do it. Yova pure sohamiti pratito buddhya prakriptas tamasati mudhaya the ego is that which has been produced by the intellect, which is deluded by nescience, which is perceived in this body as I am so-and-so. When this ego sense is totally annihilated, one attains an unobstructed identity with Brahman. Yes. So what is this ego sense, this ahankara? It is something that's created in the intellect. It is a kind of thinking. Kind of thinking. Where in the intellect, I attribute to the self the qualities of the not self. And it makes me feel like I am so and so. I am Jim. I'm the son of Richard and Helen. I'm the brother of Michael and Stuart. I live in Oakland. 
I am 72. I weigh X amount of pounds. That's an unlisted number, etc. All those ideas of self dropped them. And some of us, when we hear this, the mind just says, yes, but I am, da -da -da -da, and then I have, da -da -da -da, and I've gone through this, and I, da -da 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 -da. you can just hear in people's voice. It's like you push a button and it goes off like a tape recorder. Mm -hmm. Drop it. All of it, all associations with the body, mind, and intellect, all individual, personal sense of self. Now, these practices are only efficacious if to some degree on some occasions, maybe in meditation or while you're reading scripture, you have the capacity to slow the mind down enough that when you have this radical reversal of attention, you can have a direct experience. There's nothing there. There's just the space of pure awareness. So that you can remember, oh yeah, I am that pure awareness. I'm not a person. There's nobody there. Over and over again. The world will present to us triggers where we get identified. Our job is to stay conscious. Stay identified with Brahman, not with the ego. If we slip, get identified, don't worry. The trigger will come around again. And it will keep coming around until we let go. Over and over again. Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya Brahman alone is real. The entire phenomenal world including the ego is mithya, illusion. Next verse. Uh, Divya, do you want to? Uh, not Divya, sorry. Uh, is is your internet st a hit yeah. tonight, Ganesh? Yeah, my, my, it's probably better if someone else reads, Jim. My internet's kind of wonky. Okay. Deepa, do you mind? You're doing a beautiful job with it. I, I'm happy to try, Jim. All right. Brahma Nanda Nidir Mahabala Vatahamkara Gorahina Samveshtya Tmani Rakshate Gunamayeshande Stri Bhir Mastake Vigyanakya Vigyanakya Mahasina Shutimata Vichitya Shir Shatrayam Nirmulya Himimam Nidhim Sukakaram Diro Nubhoktum Kshamaha the treasure of the bliss of Brahman is enwrapped by the mighty and dreadful serpent of the ego sense and jealously guarded for its selfish use by its three fierce hoods, the three gunas. The wise man who destroys it by severing its three heads with the great sword of realization 
in accordance with the teachings of the scriptures alone can enjoy this treasure which bring, brings bliss. So this very, very ancient mythological image, we have it in the West of the dragon who's guarding the treasure. Here in India, the mythology is there's a three headed serpent. Serpent, dragon, they're oftentimes the same. Guarding the treasure. What is the treasure here? Brahmananda, the bliss of Brahman. Being able to revel in your own self nature. What are the three heads of this serpent, this sake? Tamas, Rajas, and even Sat. We have to cast off our identification with our attachment for any mind state. In Gita, Krishna says, O oh Arjuna, be you ever beyond the gunas, the gunaihi. Let the stuff just arise. It's a wonderful image. I think it's the poet Hafiz has. When you're abiding in the self, even if some problem arises, it's like a dust devil in the desert. It just goes and then kind of like goes away because you never invest any reality into anything the mind puts up. You can't think a real thought. No personal sense of self is real. Only I is real. Next verse. Sorry, I'm just unmuting myself. Yava dva yat kinchid dvesha doshas futis doshas futiras. As long as there is even a trace of poison left in the body, how can one hope for complete recovery? Such too is the effect of the ego sense upon the med meditator's liberation. So he uses this word dosha. I love that word. Dosha literally means a defect. But as long as there's any dosha, defect, I think here he terms it poison in the body, you won't recover. So I have my doshas, my defects of character, all of them tied to I and my. All of it has to be discarded. Next verse. Ahamo tyanta nivritya tatkritata tatkritanan <clears throat> 
by the complete cessation of the ego sense, gained by restraining the diverse mental waves created by the ego itself, and through the discrimination of the innermost rea reality, one experiences reality as I am this. Yes. So what do I need to do? I need to quieten the various vittis, the thought waves. The thoughts can go by, but the thought waves, I love the word vritti. The, the root vert means to turn or to spin. And you know what it's like when something happens and you like spin on a thought and then you get sucked down like it's a whirlpool. Such a vivid, vivid word. All of it is created by ego. Iness and minus. I'm not getting what I want. I don't get to say what I want to say. I'm not getting the attention I want. I'm not blah, 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 blah. All these various thoughts, vrittis that we spin on. Drop it. Drop it. We practice what the 13th century anonymous English monk calls unknowing. You're not trying to figure something out. You're try trying to know something. You're unknowing. And what remains is I, I. This eternal factor. Next one. Aham kare kartarya hamiti matim uncha sahasa vikaratman yatma pratifalla jushi Swastiti mushi yadyat sat prapta jani mriti jara dukh bahula prati prati chaschin murte stava sukhatano samsritiriyam. Renounce immediately your identification with the ego sense, the sense of agency by which is by its very nature a modification and is lit up by a reflection of the self. It diverts one from being established in the self. Identifying yourself with this, the false sense, you have reached the, this relative existence, full of the, mi full of the misery the of, of birth, decay, death, although you are the witness, the essence of knowledge, bliss, absolute, Beautifully clear instructions. And here he stresses one of the ways in which ego presents itself as karta, the sense of agency. I do, I think, I feel, I am doing the doing. No. It's the upadis themselves that are the age, agent, the conditionings, the body, mind, intellect. Guna and karma, the qualities of the mind and the force of the past. I am ever the witnessing consciousness, never touched by. 
If I think I'm a person, I'm deluded. Drop it. Ego always says resolve the struggle of ego. I'm a person, there's a goal. I have to move from point A to point B. Yoga says, give up the struggler and the struggle. Drop it. Be empty. Remember, you are the vast, empty space of consciousness. Next verse. Sadeka Rupasya Chidatmano Vibho Rananda Murtera Navadya Kirtehe Nevanya Tha Kwapya Vikarinaste Vinaham Vinaha Matya Sam Musha Samsruti. But for your identification with the ego sense, there is no transmigration for you, who are immutable and eternally the same, knowledge absolute, omnipresent, bliss absolute, and of unsullied glory. So the whole problem of transmigration, of becoming, is not an ontological fact. In truth, the self never incarnates. All it is is a kind of thinking. Clearest way to illustrate this is, do you reincarnate into a dream? Are you in the dream or is the dream in you? Well, it feels like I'm in the dream. It feels like I have the dream body and I have a dream ego identified with it. And I see the dream world outside and I have dream thoughts and feelings inside. But I am not in the dream. The dream is in me. And in fact, it's not even really in me. Because it's just a strange trick of the mind. These two factors, avarana shakti, failing power, I go to sleep. In the waking state, the ego state, I go to sleep to the knowledge that I am Brahman. Then vikshepa shakti, in the dream, I project the dream world. In the waking state, I project the waking state, egoistic reality. I have all these problems or all these victories. And I grunt and sweat under a weary life, as Hamlet says. Yoga says, There is no other embodiment. There is no other incarnation other than this deeply rooted conviction that I think I'm my body. It becomes the cause of it all.
at the moment of realization, what the mind of the yogi sees is, oh, I never was a person. I never really was Bob. What a strange long dream that was. I never was the body. I have always been free. How strange. Where did my ignorance go on? How did it happen? I don't know. Next verse. I think you're muted, dear. Yeah, uh, I'm online now. Tasmada hamkara mimam swashatrum bhuktur gale kanta kavat pratitam Vichitya Vijnana Mahasena Svutam Bhangshvatma Samraja Sukham Yathishtam Therefore, with the great sword of realization, destroying this ego sense, your enemy, which is like a thorn in the throat of a man who is eating, enjoy directly and freely the bliss of your own domain, the majesty of the Atma. So, if you are a person in ignorance and identified with the ego, one of my favorite images that Shankara uses, you're like a person at a banquet with a thorn in their throat. Whereas for the woman or the man of realization, what is the mark of the woman of the man of realization? Simply, I am Brahman is my constant experience. Then you effortlessly enjoy this deep, deep existential peace. You know where happiness is. It's your self-nature. You've given up the world. Next verse. Tatoha Madhervi Nivartya Vrittim Santyakta Ragaha Parmartha Labhat Tushnim Samaswatma Sukhanu Bhutya Purnatmana Brahmani Nirvikalpaha Checking the activities of the ego and renouncing all attachments through the experience of the supreme reality, be free from duality through the enjoyment of the bliss of the self and remain serene in Brahman, for then you have attained your infinite nature. Uh, Nirvikalpa state that state of absolute quiescence without perturbation. How do you check the ego and the extroversion of the mind when the mind itself gets its own unreality? When the mind commits psychic suicide, when the mind ceases to throw up, false ideas of self, vain ego-driven goals. And the fruit of that 
is Atmaramana, capacity to revel in the bliss of your own self nature. Next verse. Samula Kritopi Mana Hampunaha Vule Kita Sadia Dicheta Sashanam Sajivia Vikshepa Shatam Karoti Nabhaswata Pravra Shivari Doyata. Even though completely rooted out, this terrible ego sense, if revived in the mind, even for a moment, returns to life and creates hundreds of mischiefs, like a cloud ushered in by the wind during the rainy season. So you need to be very, very vigilant. Don't lapse into inadvertentness. You may be going through extended periods of time where that ego sense is completely rooted out. But don't get sloppy. If you let it arise, whoosh, Becomes so big very fast. Be vigilant. Keep rooting it out. Keep rooting it out. Next one. The next one's a new section. It's called Actions, Thoughts, and Vasanas. Renounce. Sounds good to me. Nigriya Shatrora Hamovakashaha Vachinna Deyo Vishayanu Chintya Sa Eva Sanjeeva Naheturasya Prakshina Jambira Tarorivambu. Having once overpowered this enemy, the ego, not a single moment's rest should be given to it to ruminate over sense objects. That is verily the cause of its returning to life. Just like water is the cause for the flowering of a citron tree that has dried up before. So the image here is, I don't know what the citron tree is, some sort of a citrus uh, fruit, but in the dry season, it looks like it's dead, but it's not. Add a little water and it comes back to life. Now, at this point, I like to borrow a story from Yoga Vasishta. Once upon a time, in heaven, there was a war between the demons, the Asuras, and the demigods, the devas. They go fighting all the time, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the king of the demons came up with a strategy. He created three super demons. Terminator demons. And he created them without ego. He sent them in to battle with the devas. And because they had no ego, they were fearless and they were slaughtering devas right and left. And the devas were freaked out. So they went to heaven and they talked with. Lord Vishnu, what do we do? What do we do? 
Vishnu says, here's your strategy. When you engage in battle with the demons, fake defeat and run away. And do it over and over. So they did. They would fight with the Terminators. Oh, we've been slain, we're beaten. And they run away. Do it again. What happened? is the demons then engaged in chintya. Chintya in Hindi means worry. Here in Sanskrit, it means an after the fact rumination, thinking about it. So the Terminator demon said, aren't we hot stuff? We just wake up the devas and we've done it a lot. We're powerful. We're just kicking butt. And as soon as they started to get a sense of agency with I-ness and minus, fear came into their minds. And the devas were able to defeat them. So the king of the demons is all upset about this. He goes, I know what I'm going to do. So he creates three more super demons, Terminator 2 demons. They not only were without ego, but they were shrotriyam, meaning they were well versed in the scriptures, meaning they had the tools to be able to keep ego from reasserting itself. Fabulous story. Just a fabulous story. Go into battle, wiping out the devas. The devas try their old trick. Oh, run away. But the Terminator 2 demons didn't buy into it. And just going forward, whack, whack. They were invincible. So the Davis go to heaven. And I think they talk to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva says there's only one solution. So he comes down and he wipes out the Terminator 2 demons. Who then attained moksha liberation. Well, they're demons. How come they got to be liberated? Because they were without evil. Lots of nuance in this story. But what it illustrates is what happens to us. We can have dropped our minds. We can be in samadhi. We're going to talk about that pretty soon. Very clear. But then something happens in life and we engage in chintya after the fact thinking about it. Story. As soon as we do that, ego reasserts itself. Then we are defeated. But be like the Terminator 2 demons. If you are Shrotriya, meaning you have your toolkit, your yogi's bag of tricks, the most important one is this axiom. If I feel like a person, I'm deluded. Drop it. No personal sense of self is real. Drop it. If I think I need X, Y, and Z in order to be happy, drop it. Let go of the struggle. Let go of the struggler. We learn these techniques from the scriptures. Shrotriya. Then we become invincible. 
one of my favorite, favorite stories. Because it really gives us a powerful tool. At this point in our practice, if the teacher sees us identified with a story, he very likely will say, drop it, let it go. No personal sense of self is real. If I feel like a person, I'm deluded. Drop ego and the struggle of ego. Next one. Sorry, I was a mute. Dehatmana samsita eva kami vilakshana kama yita katham syat athortha sandhana paratva meva bheda prasaktya avabhanda hetu. He alone, who has identified himself with the body, is greedy of sense pleasures. How can one devoid of the body idea be greedy? Hence, the tendency to ruminate over sense objects is indeed the cause, the cause for the bondage of becoming and the idea of distinction or duality. Yes, and not just the physical body. Remember Shankara talked a couple weeks ago, I think it was about these three levels of our attachments. Dehavasana, the vasanas around the body itself being fed and fondled and rubbed and that stuff. Lokavasana, my interactions with people, my desires for status, to feel important to want attention, to want approval, to want love, all that stuff. Recognition, Lokavasana, Shastravasana, literally unnecessary study of the scriptures, where the deeper meaning is, I think I can figure stuff out. talking with a person and they're really having difficulty about uh, whether they should marry someone. Big decision. And they're trying to figure it out. Well, if in the future this happens, if in the future that happens, well, what about this? And da -da 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 -da. It's not figure outable. Life itself is mostly not figure out of it. And certainly, as Krishna says in Gita, he who knows, I've studied all the scriptures, knows it not. She who knows it not, who can drop a mind, knows it. Next verse. Jim, I have a question. Please. So you you actually just said that too much scripture might even might also be a bad thing. It depends on how you approach it. If you use your swadhyaya, your self-study, as an inspiration or an instruction to practice, that's good. 
But if you think, if you read enough commentaries, you're going to be able to like drill self-realization into your head. It doesn't work that way. Does that make sense? It's a subtle distinction. I'm not saying stop reading. D did that help, Deepa? I think what I heard is if the reading and the pursuit causes ego thickening of any kind, or if it's if it gives you a sense of self grandeur because you figured it out. Well, or if you think you can figure it out, hmm. but if you use the scripture as a way to remind yourself that you were Brahman, then it's of great value. Hmm. And one of the ways in which you'll know that you've got Shastravasana working is that when you're in social situations, you're quoting scripture to other people. <laughs> you know what I mean? You might as well show them how much money you have in your purse or your big bicep. It's just another evil possession then. Now, was there another question? I thought I heard another voice. No, I was going to remind me of what you told me about uh, in the Saga of the Maharaj. You said it didn't seem like he was well-read at all. Um, that's what you told me about him. He didn't seem to have a lot of the scriptures down, um, but he was realized. Yes. But this is not saying that ignorance is the goal. I understand. Or lack yeah. of learning. That's no, not, I understand. That's not what I was saying. No. It's the unnecessary study of scripture. That's what it means, Shrotriya. All right, next verse. Karya pravardhanat vija pravritti paritrishyate karya nashad when the effects are flourishing, the seeds all the seeds also are observed to increase. Uh, when the effects are destroyed, the seeds also are destroyed. Therefore, the effect must be subdued. Yes. So do I strike at the root vasana or do I withdraw my attachments from the objects of the senses? And what Shankar is basically saying is, yes, we approach it both ways. Remember when- you say when that again? I, let me go on, let me go on. Going back to, for example, when we were talking about uh, the qualifications of a fit student. We talked about those qualities of Dhamma and Shama and Uparati. Keeping your mind intensely introverted so it doesn't gush out into the world of the objects. This is keeping a psychic distance from the object. Staying with the mind at meditation. This roots out, weakens the vasana. You strike at the root vasana. To whom did this occur? To me, who am I? And it weakens the attachment for the objects. Approach it from both sides. Yes, the vasana is the cause of the attachment. But you can deal with the attachment, which then dries up the vasana. Approach it from both sides. Does that make it a little clearer, Justin? Yes. All right, next verse. We'll do one more and then we'll meditate. Vasana vritti takkaryam karya vrittaya cha vasana Vardhate sarvathapumsa samsara 
Navirtate. Through the increase of vasanas, egocentric work increases. And when there is an increase of egocentric work, there is an increase of vasanas also. Thus, man's transmigration never comes to an end. So what is egocentric work? This deeply rooted notion that I need to go from point A to point B to be happy. Again, it only takes one of two forms. I either need to change, fix, acquire, etc., the world, or I need to change, fix, me. And I have this obligatory action, this ego-prompted activity. Not a preference, but an insistence. I must have this. If we engage in that, it increases vasana, which clouds the mind even more. The more vasana we have, the more attachment for the world and therefore more egoistic activity we get. So that's what happens if we aren't vigilant. If we aren't vigilant. Now remember at the beginning of the book, I said, if you do everything Shankara suggests, I can virtually guarantee self-realization. So we go trucking along where your understanding and your practice are together. And then a while back, for many of it starts to diverge. Our understanding of what to do is fine, but our willingness to do it, not so much. Up. If you want self realization, the price tag is to give up attachment for the world, identification with any form of self. All right, I think this is a good place to stop. What's the next verse? What number? Uh, I think we stopped at 213. We'll start with, sorry, 313. We'll start with 314 tomorrow, next time. All right, next time. Okay, any quick questions? It's 20 minutes up. Let's sit then. Oh, no, she